Welcome to Research Business Daily Report, where serious market researchers come for their news insights and commentary about their field that both impacts them inside and outside their organizations. Today, a different kind of look at Donald Trump. Though we are over a week away from the election day here in the States, we're not going to look at polling or his election chances. Instead, the equity Trump has created through his name, infused into his businesses, and a look at what's happening to that invaluable metric. RBDR is sponsored today and this week by Toluna. In touch with people. Experience the future of market research by discovering the possibilities from automated insights that use Toluna's new power concept. We'll tell you more about that tool, the latest automated insights capability available and built into Toluna's quick surveys platform at the end of today's report. With eight days until the 2016 presidential election, all eyes have turned to the polls and breaking developments that experts are wondering whether they will sway election results. But we in research are a little bit more multifaceted, and so we can look at something other in the, in the metric area besides polling. Brand Key's Robert Pasikoff has been studying the brand equity that personalities like Martha Stewart, Tiger Woods, and Donald Trump have been constructing around themselves and their companies for decades. When it comes to the Republican presidential nominee, Pasikoff admits that he has been marveling at the marketing power that has been endowed into the Trump brand name. However, over the past 15 months, Pasikoff has been witnessing something else vis-a-vis -vis Trump and brand equity, and we talked with him about it late last week. Um, but it appears that once he became the presumptive nominee, some real uh, ill effects started to beset him as a brand. Why don't you give us a little detail about that? Uh, yeah, he had been very, very strong prior to uh, the campaign. Uh, the moment he became the uh, official standard bearer of the GOP, we saw um, four areas in, uh, in the consumer area, mostly, um, shirts, ties, suits, jewelry, where the brand took a real hit. Um, he saw some directional up, upticks in uh, real estate, the hotels, TV, and golf clubs. Um, and that may have just been, you know, a reflection of uh, audiences reacting to the rhetoric that they were hearing uh, you know, hearing from him. Are, are those, uh, the ones that went up, are those more affluent, more upscale? They are. Um, it's clearly the white affluent uh, group of uh, voters that are involved in those categories. Um, and those are the ones that, uh, you know, we saw going, going up. But most of the you know, most of what he he does that the public sees are the more consumer-oriented categories, and those took a hit. The responsibility of a brand is to bring added value to the product or service that has the name on it. Uh, not everything is able to do that. I mean, I, I know that it's contrary to the 21st century philosophy that everything can be a brand, but the truth is everything is not a brand. Um, and there are very few uh, human brands, the highest end of the brand continuum, uh, that are out there that embody the values that people aspire to and therefore are willing to buy the products and surround themselves with, uh, in this instance, all things Trump. So what additional value did the Trump brand name bring to uh, shirts and ties and things like that and, and, and even the upscale area, the TV and the entertainment and country clubs and real estate such prior to him becoming a political candidate? The range ran from about 20% added value, which was for watches, and that's low end of things for him, 
upwards of uh, 37, 38 percent in terms of uh, TV and entertainment, uh, and nothing lower in between. I mean, we looked at seven categories: uh, real estate. <coughs> Mm-hmm. Real estate, for example, if you took a building that uh, you and I had built and were able to uh, sell it for a thousand dollars a square foot, if we put the Trump name on that exact same building that he did not build and had nothing to do with other than licensing his name, we could then uh, sell the space for fourteen hundred dollars a square foot. Hmm. Okay, and. How far has that brand equity tumbled in recent months? It's, it's well, give me a good, the example in terms of the one that I that took the biggest hit, like TV and entertainment was, was high. And that, that was about um, 35%. Uh, that's now down to an 18% added value. It makes it about average for anyone that, is going to be a celebrity spokesperson or do something in terms of uh, TV or, or entertainment. Mm-hmm. Uh, real estate, which had been fairly stable in terms of the hotels and such, uh, there was about a 30-35% uh, added value to that. Uh, that, in fact, did remain stable at that level when he was made the GOP nominee. But when the Entertainment Tonight tape was released, uh, those numbers were literally cut in half. If you put aside uh, the, the, uh, the kind of reactions that people are going to have to that tape regarding his personality or his behavior, um, and then just look at it from the perspective of how it changes the perception of the brand, um, it, I think it was it was even compounded because it was even worse that someone thought because they had money, that thing that we were aspiring to, the good life that we were aspiring to, the fact that I had money allowed me to behave this way um, became something somewhat of a slap in the face to the consumer. And therefore, the uh, the behavior is going to change. I mean, we've seen it. We've seen it short term. Uh, I have to say that um, I expected some of the things in the marketplace to happen now, but I think that the worst is yet to come. So you know, there are people who. I mean, the reality is that consumers are. Uh, they can be disappointed, but. What the hell? We have the reservations at the hotel. Just let it go. We won't make a reservation next time, and it's likely that they won't make a reservation next time. Um, but you're going to see it six months down the road in terms of sales of products that have his name on them. I think that that's going to be impacted significantly. Now, you, you've done work over the years to look to look at brand equity of other personalities, uh, the Martha Stewart's, the Tiger Woods, and that sort of thing. So you've really got a historical backdrop to compare uh, to what Trump may be facing moving forward. Yeah, I don't think he's coming back from this. I mean, he may go someplace else. Uh, you know, it certainly doesn't doesn't preclude his doing some streaming TV, you know, video show weekly or daily. Um, but from, uh, from an actual brand perspective and what he's dealing with now, uh, none of those brands ever really came back from the hits they took. I mean, Marcus, again, no judgment. I mean, it just is when you get arrested and you go to jail, uh, it affects the brand. Uh, when you when the PGA made Tiger Woods do the walk of shame about cheating on his wife, it affected the brand. Um, interesting to see that there are other brands out there that just don't get into trouble. You've got the Oprahs of the world or the Michael Jordans of the world. Uh, you know, could they sustain uh, the same kind of hit that a Trump brand? 
is taking now? I don't think so. I mean, I think what happens is the 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 viewpoint, the personality, the perspective of the consumers is altered. I mean, all Trump had, because um, I've not seen his taxes either, um, it was was the brand and what it stood for. And now it's standing for something different. And that different isn't helping in the categories that uh, we would normally track. You didn't see any erosion in his equity when uh, he criticized the Khan family. You didn't see any erosion uh, with all his Muslim ban talk, or, or, or did you? We, no, we did. Um, I mean, we saw that there were effects in the consumer areas. I mean, those areas all came down from where they had been prior to June of last year. Um, consumers reacted uh, badly to to what the rhetoric that was being put out there. Um, the categories like uh, TV and entertainment, the golf clubs, the uh, the real estate, the hotels, um, those actually directionally moved up a little bit. And I think you're talking about a different audience. I mean, primarily white, primarily affluent. Um, you know, I, I, I suspect everyone has their own opinions about what he had to say, but he wasn't, we weren't seeing negative effects. I mean, it was a split. We tracked these seven categories and three of them moved up and four of them moved down. Uh, it wasn't until the video came out that everything started to collapse. Hmm. Okay. Robert, thank you for your insights. You're very welcome. That's your Research Business Daily Report, which has been sponsored today and will be all this week by Toluna. In touch with people. You know, there is not a successful researcher out there who can afford to ignore the future of market research. And those changes can be somewhat incremental, but add up to some very big changes. Today, you've got a chance to discover one of the latest research innovations, a future element of research that's available right here and now. It's the viability of automated insights via Toluna's new power concept, which offers a fully automated, easy to use, real time capability that brings an extremely actionable deliverable and does it real quickly. You will find out about Power Concept Components and its rapid benefits using the link that has been sent to our email subscribers or head directly to the description box underneath today's video and you can access it there. We hope you have a great research day and we will look forward to seeing you back here with us tomorrow.